are great. We want to get as much trash out of the ocean and off the beaches. With more than a garbage truck full of plastic waste entering the ocean every single minute, cleanups cannot be the only solution. But I believe cleanups are still very powerful. Here's how we can get the most impact out of a cleanup. We are here in Pulau Gazumbo in Penang, Malaysia. And despite no humans living here, our impact is obvious. Gazumbo is actually a very important island because in front of the island actually is a big patch of seagrass area which is very unique environment and a unique ecosystem for Penang. These seagrass meadows are very important coastal habitats and incredibly biodiverse, sequestering carbon and supporting food systems and the livelihood of the local community. They are critical to the health of the ocean. Now I know it's not just about cleaning up, yes. what's the most important part? Data will tell us what, where and why and then by doing the data, we are able to solve uh, the long-term solution for this island. For example, today we have a lot of plastics. Yeah, then single-use plastic will be the one that we have to reduce. That will be served as a way forward, for example, for our no single-use plastic policies on that. Have you ever wondered where trash goes after a cleanup? Some people just throw them away and hey, it's better in the landfills than in the oceans. But we can divert as much waste away from landfills and oceans if we just sort our trash. So basically, what we are recording here for each of the bottles collected. So we separate by the bottles plastic and then their bottle caps. We got 22 of them. Baby size, adult size, all kinds of slippers. Can open night market already. Okay, we have five pieces of styrofoam here. Uh, one slipper, hello? One slipper. Five HDP. Five HDP. So even if this is recyclable, if they show up dirty like this, they're not going to get recycled. Most possibly, they do not want it. The best point is that when you finish using your plastic, is to go to recycling immediately, not to trash them. If you trash them, they will get dirty and that's it. That's the end life of the plastic. So, you know, even when we're getting drinks and that plastic is recyclable, there's always going to be elements that aren't, like the label itself. These tiny pieces are super hard to pick up and the beach is covered with them. If you look closely, all oh, these are uh, this integrating into yes. smaller pieces. These are the main source of microplastic that is already going into our food chain. If you look at some of the bottles, I can actually show you the expiry date or even where it comes from. For rubbish or marine litter, they, they don't need passport to travel around. <laughs> <laughs> you got some good nets here. <laughs> we collected a lot of ghost gears, especially fishing nets. Really terrifying to see the island. Why did you get the community to come together to do this? We are all people who love to see. So we are going to clean this thing up, all right? We may not be able to do it today, but we will come back, we will definitely clean this thing up. Okay, 60. Nice. Oh my god, we barely did anything. Yeah. <laughs> After all this hard work, we're still collecting like very little rubbish. It's like, oh, I can't imagine, you know, how long to finish all this. So we didn't want to add any more waste with our cleanups. What were some of the things we did? We sourced these used bags from factories in Penang. We filled these bags pretty quickly with all sorts of trash. Next comes a rigorous process of sorting. We separated it out into four main groups. And out of the four groups, one of it is trash, non-recyclable. So that will have to go to landfill. MBBP will be picking that up. And then the other three categories, the main one is plastic bottles, which is PT. Those are high value, they will be recycled back into plastic. The other one is rigid plastics, which are like your food containers, your shampoos. They have different components inside. And then the third category, and this is quite interesting, um, is ghost gear, the fishing nets. And fishing nets have um, many different kinds of plastics. Most likely, it will be turned into fuel through pyrolysis. Um, but in any case, our recycling partners, they're certified in collecting ocean-bound plastics, so they will be able to maximize our recovery rate from this cleanup. Even with removing almost 800 kilograms of trash in a day, we cannot outrun the amount of trash we're creating. Indiscriminate use of single-use plastic needs to be a thing of the past. All of us need to turn off the tap on plastic waste. So a cleanup isn't just a cleanup. What is the message you want people to take away from this? This, this cleanup shouldn't just be a cleanup. It should be a starting point for awareness, for action. And I think having academia here, state actors, community, we will be able to hopefully spread the message to a wider crowd. This is uh, existence of humanity. And we cause it and we have to join hands to find a solution. You know, um, we might not be able to solve a long-term solution, but if we start 
start doing something today, you know, we can actually create a better future also. This is your environment. It belongs to you. Please take good care of it. If you don't, nobody else will. Yeah. So we hope that in future, we can have more people to join us, everybody to join us. We need you. We are all part of the problem. Now we need to bear responsibility and be part of the solution. Whether it's a cleanup or preventing waste from becoming waste in the first place. We need to act now.